Freight UAE Li788. Plane struck a ground vehicle at Hong Kong International Airport. After an Emirates Sky cargo plane skidded off the runway. A cargo plane skids off Hong Kong runway into sea. A cargo plane skidded off the runway at Hong Kong International Airport before colliding with a security patrol car and slamming it into the sea. The pilots knew one out of four engines was not working. But still, they flew the plane because even with three engines active, it seemed manageable. And as expected, their seven-hour-long journey went seriously smooth and uneventful. Even they completed the touchdown stage beautifully. But what happened just after that was unbelievable to the entire aviation system. Their journey was 99.99% completed, but just then, the plane veered off the runway at full speed, crashed into the fence, and plunged into the ocean violently. What's worse is nobody has any clue how everything went wrong so suddenly. And it feels like the machine itself decided to end up in a disaster. This is the bizarre true story of Emirates Sky Cargo Flight 9788, which makes it even more haunting when you know the fact that nowadays, most of the passenger flights also fly in similar conditions. On October 19, 2025, it's almost five in the evening and the sun is setting over the desert outside Dubai, painting the sky in shades of orange and gold. And at Al Maktoum International Airport, Emirates Sky Cargo Flight 9788 sits on the ramp waiting for its seven-hour journey to Hong Kong. It's a routine cargo run, so just four Turkish crew members are on board, with no passengers and an empty cargo hold. Captain Attila Yilmaz is 35 years old. He's experienced, confident, and ready for another standard flight. Beside him sits 44-year-old First Officer Kandemir Ulker, and in the back, there's 35-year-old loadmaster Kaner Durgit and 46-year-old aircraft maintenance engineer Muzaffar Tuidu. This particular Boeing 747 initially started as a passenger plane with all Nippon Airways back in 1993. But after that, the plane was converted into a freighter in 2011. By 2013, it belonged to Air ACT, flying cargo routes for Emirates. And tonight, it's carrying nothing but an empty belly flying across the world. Overall, everything looks good. The weather forecast is clear, and the route is familiar. So finally, at 4.59 local time, the big jet rolls down the runway and lifts into the night sky. The lights of Dubai fade behind them, and ahead only lies seven hours of darkness until they enter Hong Kong. But there's something the crew already knows. That engine number four has an inoperative thrust reverser, which simply means the right side outer engine can't push air forward to help the plane slow down after landing. But it seems to be manageable enough for the crew because they'll have three working reversers instead of four. Indeed, the braking won't be entirely strong. The plane would stop covering a little more distance than it should, but that's not a big problem. So they fly on and the night passes uneventfully. But what they never imagined, even in their nightmare, that how just a broken reverser in this plane could lead to a disaster, while thousands of flights have actually landed safely under similar conditions. Kongo approach, you good night. Emmy 9788, descending flight 7110, unrestricted, inbound, cut. Around 3.52 in the morning in Hong Kong, the sky over the city is dark but clear. Visibility is so excellent that the runways of Hong Kong International Airport lit up like ribbons of light on the ground. Runway 07 left, which is scheduled for this flight's landing, is active. 
It's the newest runway at the airport, built on reclaimed land stretching out into the sea. The approach lighting is on, and the Instrument Landing System, or ILS, is working just flawlessly. Inside the cockpit, First Officer Olker is flying the approach, and Captain Yilmaz is monitoring. They've set up for an auto brake to landing with flaps at 25 degrees. The 747 descends smoothly through the darkness, the runway growing larger in the windscreen. At exactly 3.52 local time, the wheels touch the runway. The moment the wheels touch, the first officer calls for speed brakes. Immediately, the panels on top of the wings rise up, disrupting the airflow, killing the lift, and pushing the weight of the aircraft onto the wheels. Exactly as designed. But everything starts going haywire the moment the first officer selects reverse thrust. All the engine's reverse thrust systems are working correctly and slowing the plane down as expected. But suddenly, a warning message flashes on the screen in front of the pilot saying, Auto brakes. It means without any reason, the computer lost control of all the auto brakes. So the pilots now have to do it manually. Captain Yilmaz grabs the controls tightly because they're still moving fast. One pilot is trying to keep the plane on the center line. The other is now manually controlling the brakes. The aircraft is slowing down, but not as quickly as it should. They're still traveling at high speed down a long runway in the dark. And now the engine four does something unexpected. It has an inoperative reverser, so it should be sitting at idle. But it starts accelerating, that also forward, not in reverse. Naturally, the engine roars up again and slowly build the full forward thrust. So now the situation was like this. The other three engines are trying to slow the jet down. While on one side of the aircraft, the fourth engine is on full thrust. As a result, the aircraft begins to drift left and the crew has less than 10 seconds to save their lives. Imagine driving a car where three wheels are braking and one wheel is accelerating. The car's going to spin. The same principle applies here. The aircraft starts being pushed to the left and they see the runway edge light sliding toward them. And just when they are busy trying to tackle this life and death problem, something even worse happens. All the thrust reversers suddenly close and go back to their normal tucked in position. This means all three engines are idle, while only one engine is active and producing 100% thrust. For a few critical seconds, every single engine on the aircraft starts pushing forward instead of slowing the plane down, and no one knows why. The aircraft is now veering off the runway with no reverse thrust to help slow it down. And one engine at full forward power is dragging it sideways. The crew fights back hard by redeploying the reversers, pushing and pulling, and trying to regain some kind of symmetry. And they kind of succeed. The flight data recorder shows that engines one, two, and three eventually go back into reverse thrust again. But the problem is that they're not on the runway anymore. By the time the reversers redeploy, the nose gear has already crossed the edge of the paved surface and come onto the safety strip. The jet is still moving fast and it's heading directly toward the perimeter fence. And it becomes more terrifying when you know what's happening just beyond that fence on a service road outside the airport boundary. There is a security vehicle with two men sitting inside. They're doing routine patrol work, watching the runways and making sure everything is secure. No wonder they have no idea what's coming. And when they see it, there's no time to run or move the vehicle. Within a moment, the aircraft hits the vehicle head on, crushing it completely like a plastic can. But the plane doesn't slow down at all. Instead, the plane keeps dragging forward, crashing through the fence, and finally, violently plunging into the South China Sea. The impact is so brutal that the tail section rips away from the fuselage, and in less than 60 seconds, 
A routine cargo flight becomes the first fatal accident at Hong Kong International Airport in 26 years. The moment an aircraft hits water, time becomes the enemy. The Boeing 747 comes to rest in the shallow waters just off the airport perimeter. As mentioned already, the tail is gone, the fuselage is cracked, and the aircraft is almost drowned. And inside, the four crew members are bruised, shaken, but still alive. At 3.57 in the morning, the Hong Kong Fire Services Department comes to the scene with boats, trucks, firefighters, and paramedics. As the crew scrambles out of the aircraft and into the water, they're pulled onto rescue boats and rushed to the hospital. Luckily, all four of them survive, but the two men in the security vehicle aren't so lucky. One of them is killed instantly in the collision. The other is pulled from the wreckage and rushed to North Lantau Hospital. He dies shortly after arrival, and their crushed ground vehicle is found seven meters underwater, dragged five meters from shore by the force of the impact. As the sun rises over Hong Kong, the scale of the disaster becomes clear. Runway 07 left is closed. The other two runways remain open. But 12 cargo flights are canceled throughout the day. Passenger operations continue, but the airport is in shock. More than 210 firefighters and first aid officers are involved in the rescue and recovery efforts. 45 vehicles, ships, and aircraft are deployed. And a full investigation starts immediately as the questions are already piling up. What went wrong? How did a routine landing turn into a fatal crash? Why did engine four surge to full power? Why did the auto brakes fail? Why did the thrust reversers stow and then redeploy? But first they have to find the black boxes. The flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder are somewhere in the water. The wreckage is hugely scattered, but on October 21st, they report they've located the black box. And when the data is finally extracted and analyzed, the story it tells is more disturbing than anyone expected. Most of this story comes from the flight data recorder. Everyone knew that engine force thrust reverser was inoperative before the flight even began. It was documented information. That means the reverser either couldn't deploy or had been deactivated. But the data shows something impossible and chilling. The reverse lever for engine four moved fully forward during rollout. That can't happen unless someone does it manually. But why would anyone move the reverse lever on an engine that doesn't have a working reverser? What was the crew trying to do? Or did the system do something unexpected? The investigators also found that the speed brake lever, which should have been up and deployed, was later found in the flight detent. That's the position you'd use during flight, not on the ground during landing. So, when did it move? Who moved it? Why? Every answer leads to three more questions and the clock is still ticking down to the moment of impact. But here's what makes this accident so haunting. That day, the airport environment was perfect. The runway was clean. The weather wasn't a factor. Wind speed was four knots with gusts up to 21 knots. Basically, there was nothing severe or unusual. Air traffic control communications were routine. There were no warnings, service disruptions, or external factors. This means it has to be something internal. The preliminary report doesn't assign blame because the truth is far more complex than any single mistake. The hardest part of any investigation is accepting that sometimes there's no single villain, just a chain of small failures that link together into a catastrophe. Investigators recovered everything they could, like the flight data recorder, the cockpit voice recorder, the engine control units, ATC recordings, CCTV footage from cameras facing the runway and perimeter zone. 
but they're piecing together a puzzle. The final report will eventually answer the most difficult questions. Was this a mechanical anomaly, a systems malfunction, a human-machine interaction failure, a procedural issue, or a combination of all these elements? What's certain is this. A normally flown approach turned into a catastrophic runway excursion because multiple layers of protection failed or were overridden by events that happened faster than the crew could manage. And until we understand exactly why, every landing carries that same terrifying possibility. The investigation continues. The recorders have been recovered and the data is being analyzed. The answers will explain why engine four surged, why the auto brakes failed, why the reversers moved, and why the landing turned into a disaster in less than half a minute. But as long as the final report doesn't arrive, we can brainstorm the possible reasons behind it. One likely scenario is a hidden fault in the thrust control system of engine four. Even with its reverser deactivated, that engine should never surge to full forward power on landing unless something inside the auto throttle or throttle position sensors sent a wrong signal. A stuck servo, a corrupted input, or a misreading in the electronic engine controls could have commanded thrust without the crew intending it. Another layer could be a ground sensing glitch if the aircraft briefly behaved as if it was still airborne. The automation would pull the speed brakes back and could also stow the reversers to protect the engines. With the wings regaining lift and the wheels losing grip, braking would suddenly become weak. And any asymmetric thrust would push the aircraft sideways very quickly. Plus, there's also the human factor. When the auto brakes failed, the cockpit workload shot up instantly. In high stress moments, even a small unintended movement on the throttle quadrant can cause the system to interpret a thrust command the crew did not mean to give. On a Boeing 747, the reverse levers sit close to the main thrust levers. So it's possible that while managing three reversers manually, someone made a slight input on engine 4's lever without realizing it. Another angle is the maintenance condition of engine 4. If the reverser deactivation wasn't done perfectly, say a connector, sensor, or bypass valve wasn't secured correctly, the system could have received mixed signals during rollout, triggering unexpected stow commands and confusing the thrust logic across all four engines. The most realistic guess is that this wasn't one failure, but several small ones lining up. A thrust control fault on engine four, a momentary ground sensing dropout, automatic stowing of reversers, loss of speed brakes, and a crew trying to manage everything in seconds. Any one of these on its own is survivable. All of them together created a situation no crew could recover from in the time they had. But right now we have to wait for the final report and when it arrives, it will shape new procedures, new training, and new safeguards. Until then, we wait for the full truth and hope the lessons prevent anything like this from happening again. What do you think really happened to this plane? And even more terrifying, what if this kind of disaster happens tomorrow on any passenger flight? When machines act in ways even pilots can't predict, are we really in control? Or are we trusting systems that can turn on us without warning? Tell us your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want more deep dives like this, hit subscribe and stay with this channel.